So now we have complete control over the, the way the background looks and the way the shadows uh, are overlaid onto our texture all through the video sequence editor and we don't have to go back and forth uh, re-rendering out the entire animation again just to get a slightly different look with uh, with these shadows. Welcome back to the quarantine series at Blender Frenzy. I am Justin and this is what we have created last time. This little animation here with the video sequence editor and it's not much but uh, we did do a little speed control where we made it speed up and slow down. We added some music, of course, that you can hear. And uh, then we did the little fade in and fade out. So at the beginning and end, it fades from black and then to black, like that. Ta-da! So yeah, so that is what we have created up until now. But let's just say you're working for somebody uh, that looks at this and says, oh, this is perfect except the shadows are too dark or the shadows are too light for some reason. And they want you to uh, see what it looks like with lighter shadows or darker shadows or whatever. And so uh, what you would have to do, here's our um, scene here with our meta strip with all the information inside. Uh, what you would actually have to do is come back over to our shading, all of our nodes here, and then you would have to adjust your light. So just take your light and scale it in make it brighter, scale it out, make it a little bit darker, something like that maybe. Or come over here to your light and then adjust the size to maybe something like one to make this shadows a little bit softer or two or three, so two. You can see now the shadows are a little bit softer there. And then what you would have to do is you'd have to take this and you have to come back over here. Then you'd have to uh, bake another texture out onto the placeholder and then you'd have to save it then you'd have to hook that back up here and then you'd switch it over to EV for the render and then you would render all 200 frames again and then you would take those 200 frames import them back into the VSE and then have to replace all of these in here with um, that image sequence. That is a little bit tedious and it can be done if you only do that once. But let's say you do that again and then your, your boss or your the person who's hired you, whatever, says, ah, no, actually, I don't like it like that. Let's try something else. So now you don't really have a lot of flexibility. You have to go and do that whole process over again. So there's a hack that you can do that will allow you to separate the shadows from the texture and import them both into the video sequence editor so you can adjust it in here. So first thing, let's go back over to our shading tab. This is our setup so far. So here is the node setup again. Again, we've got our texture, our normal map plugged into a diffuse shader uh, that feeds into our material output, giving us this effect with the lighting. Now we are in cycles right now because cycles is the physically based renderer that gives us the best uh, physical accuracy of light bouncing off of the object and also because that's the only way we can actually bake textures. So what we want to do is we want to separate the shadows from the texture and the easiest way to do that is if we come to our render tab and go down to our bake option. Under bake type we currently have combined but if we change that to shadow then all we have to do is make sure our cylinder is selected and our placeholder is selected. Now again, the placeholder is just my way of baking it onto a, a temporary texture right here and then saving it out as something different. Um, you can also just create a new texture by clicking this button here, new image, and then creating an entirely new image. Um, so I've got my placeholder selected and then what I can do is click bake here and this should work. Now I say this should work because it doesn't. <laughs> and, and we're not gonna do it this way, but this is the way that Blender should be able to uh, make the shadows separate from the object, no problem. Uh, but you'll see the problems that we run into. Now actually that's not what I want. I forgot to change my light settings back to, uh, I had six inches here, so I'm gonna do six inches. Okay, and so that gives me the lighting that I want. So now let's go back over to our object and go back to our bake shadow and I'm gonna do this again. Okay, so this is the result from the lighting setup that I have. And if I scroll in here, you can see these banding lines again. And uh, if we now hook this up to our material output, uh, yeah, that looks 
pretty horrendous, actually. And it doesn't even look like the type of shading of this. Look at the difference between this. This is the shading that we have set up. And this is supposed to be the shadows. That doesn't make any sense. Now, of course, we can see that that banding is due to, again, our geometry here, and it's just doing it on those lines. And even though we have our subdivision modifier, it's still recognizing those subdivisions, and it's not smoothing it out the way we want. So um, I could just up these subdivisions, of course, um, you know, make the make these more like this. But that frustrates me because we don't have to. We've already baked the texture without these lines, with these settings. And so it to me, I'm just like, no, no, we shouldn't have to do this. So I've actually come up with a different hack that's going to give us a lot more of what we're looking for. So uh, instead of increasing these, we're going to go ahead and turn off the overlays here. And let's back out here. What I'm going to do is, if you notice, the shadow pass is actually just a mixture of black and white image that kind of uh, fades from one to the other. So instead of using the shadow type bake type, I'm actually going to go back to combined and we're going to use the combined bake type. And we're going to actually, instead of plugging in our texture here, we're going to just add in an input RGB, a color, and we're just going to make this white and we're going to plug that in in place of our texture. And now what we have is all of our shadow and our bump information plus this white texture, which will give us a black and white image similar to this. So if I go ahead and bake now, oh, let's, uh, let's make sure our placeholder is selected and our object is selected. Bake, all right, and ta-da, we have a much better result that looks very similar to our actual setup here. So you can see the shadows um, look almost identical. And if we scroll in here, you can see that banding is gone. Now, of course, um, it's not uh, completely black in the shadow areas here on the object, and that's because it's calculating also the world atmosphere background. So if I bring this strength down to zero, you can see now we don't have any world illumination. And if I go ahead and hook this back up, you can see now our shadows are darker. And so this may be more of what you want to get us closer to that black and white image just so we have a little bit more control. So once again I'm going to come back to our render and go to bake again and this time we're going to bake everything without the global illumination. Okay and so this is what we have. So this is uh, very similar to the first one we did but now you can see we don't have those nasty lines there and if we go ahead and hook that up you can see that these two match pretty good. And so now all I have to do is mix the two. So we're done with these. I'm going to uh, take these. I'm going to just hide them, bring them down here. And all we're going to do is mix the texture. This is our main texture and our shadows together. And for that, we're going to shift A, add in a color mix RGB and then mix these two together like this. And nothing is happening yet because we need to make sure this is multiply. And now you can see something is happening, but it's not quite what we need. So we need to switch these two around. And now <laughs> you see nothing looks like it's happening, but that's because we're at halfway between the two, which is basically nothing is happening. So we're just gonna crank this up to one. And now you can see both of these are completely merged together just like we would uh, expect. And the cool thing about this is we can adjust it to where the shadows are lighter. It has, it has a bit less of an effect, the shadows there, or darker. Um, and then let's go ahead and bring our world back up to one. And then, yeah, and then we can just uh, play with that, how that might look here in the, in the world. Uh, you can even add in a brightness and contrast, color brightness contrast, and put it right here to adjust the shadows. So I can actually make it more of a contrasted look with the shadows, brighter, brighter look or darker look there. 
Uh, or uh, I can make it uh, a lot softer shadows and light lighting like that. And notice I'm not even, I can even go ahead and turn off my light here because I'm not using any lighting information. Um, it's all done just based on the mixture of these two textures together. So the good news comes in in that we can do the brightness and contrast and multiply it within the video sequence editor itself. So we can actually, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these here, connect our main texture, and then we're going to render out all 200 frames just with this texture. And then when, when that is done, we're going to create a separate folder for just the shadow. And then we're going to render the animation again with all 200 frames. Yes, so we'll have to render the animation twice so that they match. But once we render them out, we can import both sequences into the video sequence editor. Um, and another thing you can do to have even more control is uh, let's make sure we are in Eevee because right now we're in cycles. And since we've already baked our images, we don't need cycles anymore. So we're going to make sure this is an Eevee and then um, come down to uh, film, oh, <laughs> film, and then click transparent. And as long as you are in um, rendered mode, if you're in viewport shading mode, it's not going to, you're not going to notice anything. But if you're in rendered mode, you can see we have that transparent checkerboard background. So now it's only going to render out our object. Now I went over rendering a image sequence in the camera animation video. So go check that out if you haven't already. So I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but I am going to show you instead of rendering it out into a JPEG, uh, I'm going to, uh, let's see, go to our, I've already done this, so I'm going to just navigate to the texture here, and I've uh, already rendered this out, but uh, we'll just start there and do accept, and then file format, I'm going to change to PNG. Now, this is important. You need something with transparency if you're not going to render the background, and then uh, with PNG, you can choose RGBA. That's important too because A is your alpha, which is your transparency. So just those two things to change, and then you can render out your image sequence in your folder. Do that for the texture, and then do that for the shadow. And once you're done with that, then come over to your video sequence editor, and I'm going to tab out here. I'm just going to go ahead and hide the meta strip there. Let's go to the beginning and then shift A to add, and we're gonna add in a sequence. So we're gonna to navigate to our sequence. I'm gonna cho choose the texture first. Make sure again, it's starting at one and counting upwards. Add image, move that up. And then I'm going to add in the shadows. Same thing and move that up. And now all I have to do is make sure I select my shadow strip and then under strip properties, by the way, if you don't see this, press N on the keyboard and then under strip tab, uh, blend mode is going to be multiply. And now that will multiply it over the texture just like it did in the shade, the shader nodes. And now we can just adjust the opacity here to adjust the strength of that shadow. And you can also do the same thing as we did in the nodes. If we come over to modifiers, add strip modifier and a brightness and contrast. And now we can adjust the brightness and contrast the exact same way we did with the nodes. And you can go back and forth with this and with the opacity. And of course, now we can just play it. And you can see we have the result right away. And let's say we don't like that. Let's get a little bit brighter and we can see our result and just play it. And that is the power of separating the two uh, and putting them together. Now, uh, it's not showing the background here. The background kind of disappears when we choose multiply, but we can change that. All we have to do is select both of these and then control G to make a meta strip. Now the meta strip uh, has a blend mode of replace that we just need to change to alpha over. And now we have this black background, which we can also change to any color we might want like that. And there we go. So now we have complete control over the, the way the background looks and the way the shadows uh, are overlaid onto our texture all through the video sequence editor. And we don't have to go back and forth, uh, re-rendering out 
the entire animation again just to get a slightly different look with uh, with these shadows. Uh, and let's go back to here. Let's just uh, bring that down a little bit more. Let's make make these a bit a bit harsher here. Let's go back to zero. Yeah, something like uh, something like that. Tab back out, and now we have this. And of course, it's a little choppy here because uh, we don't we haven't uh, done any sort of proxy setup or anything. Uh, we can also hover our mouse over here in, and then render size 25. I don't know if that's going to help it at all. Um, oh, Control R. There we go. Maybe that's a little bit more smooth. But yeah, and then we can just do the same thing that we did last time. Um, we can speed it up or slow it down, fade in and fade out, all those good things. Okay, and with that, we have concluded the level one of our quarantine series, finally. This is like 15 videos in, and now we're done with just the beginning, where we're just focused on this one toilet paper roll. And now we have leveled up to level two, which is the researcher. And in the researcher level, we will learn how to make a thousand rolls of toilet paper, building upon what we have learned so far. Uh, we're going to talk about some more modifiers, which we've kind of already talked about. We're going to do basic physics, and then we're going to do some more advanced UV mapping and texture baking in light and shadow. And that's it's going to be a little bit different because there's a few extra steps you have to do to bake a thousand objects all at the same time onto one image. So um, yeah, we'll go over that. And then uh, advanced camera animation, we'll do um, a little bit more interesting of a camera animation instead of just circling our object. So that is level two, and I don't plan it being 15 more videos. So all the levels from now on are going to build off of each other. The level one laid the foundation, so there was a lot to talk about. But now we just build up on that foundation, and uh, the levels should get shorter now as we go along. But I'm really excited to finally level up to level two researcher mode, so stay tuned. Oh dear. Rioting is starting. Sounds like. Oh boy, we live in some crazy times here. <sighs> Got some riots going on out downtown, and um, that is not fun. So, we'll try to get through this if we can. If my apartment complex doesn't get burnt to the ground. All right, anyway, 